I need to hydrate. I wish that was a beer. Before I get started, I want to make it clear that I'm not doing this maliciously or with bad intent whatsoever. I'm doing this because my voice has been unheard throughout this entire thing. And my character has been misrepresented and it's been questioned and it's been really thrown under the bus. Why'd you, why'd you leave Tori? How could you leave Tori? How could you cheat on her and leave her for somebody else? And that hurts because none of that is true. It's in fact the exact opposite. I think she created a big mess and chaos when she threw everything out there on the internet. It's exactly what she wanted. The exact opposite of what I wanted. I wanted everything to remain private, as it should be. And the fact that it wasn't, and the fact that I'm still getting the questions, it's time to clear it up. She made this mess. I think if I don't speak up, then I'll regret it. And I'm not one to speak up, and I hate confrontation, and I hate calling people out for their bullshit even when they deserve it. And now I know she deserves it. And now is the time to defend my name and defend myself and share the truth. So I'll start from the beginning. Tori and I met 2017. We got engaged a few months later, fast. We married on our year anniversary, and then we had our wedding the next year in front of our family. And three days later, we had everything packed and we were moving to California because my job had brought us there and that was my new home station and it was time for me to start my training for my new job. Time rolls by, July we make three really good friends. They're our best friends for everything. I mean, they were always around us. I was periodically going home to Texas. I'm staying here, I'm flying on missions. I could see things were kind of starting to wear on us and she was homesick and she was mad that I was, you know, doing my job and I had to leave home for a week at a time, two weeks. She told me that she wanted to start planning for our future in Texas. Being in California for three, four months is kind of a shock, like, hey, we just settled in. A few months roll by and she's still dead set on starting the process of moving. Not even a year out of my enlistment. No, that's not what I want. I don't, I don't want to move to Texas. I don't see that in our future. I want to start thinking about things together. Maybe we could go back to Texas for a few years and then go to Washington to see my family for a few years. And maybe we could start somewhere new. But I'm not ready to move to Texas right away and build a house and start a family immediately in somewhere I don't know where I want to live. It became, I'm moving to Texas and you're going to come with me or you're not going to come with me. In between that, Tori started getting really close to one of our best friends. And I saw, saw the signs, you know, and, and I told her how uncomfortable it made me and the moments where I wasn't okay with certain things. And I never saw her cross that line. But in my gut, I could, it felt like something was wrong. And February rolls around. And Tori tells me she wants to go back to Texas, help her family out with the business, and then come back in like a week. And I get, you want to see family? So later that night, you know, we we get into it, we start fighting, and then she drops the divorce bomb on me. I have I didn't see this coming. You know, I didn't, I, a divorce, you know, I just couldn't get over it. I couldn't get over a divorce. You know, not even that we were going to try and work it out. We weren't going to make the effort to, you know, compromise on our future. So that night I slept in my car and I came here early the next morning to take her to the airport so she could go to Texas and then I took her parents to breakfast and I told them what was going on and I asked them for any advice that they could give me. And all they could say was, well, she needs to be home with family. And I wasn't expecting anything more than that. A week later, Tori and I met back in California to talk about things. She told me she was leaving. She said, I'm going to pack my stuff and I'm going to leave. I need to be in Texas. I don't know if I want to be with you. I don't know if I want to leave you. I tried everything. You know, I pulled out, I, be I begged, I pleaded. I said everything that I could to make her stay. I told her that I was ready to move to Texas. I was ready to get out of the military. I was going to drop everything. I literally begged her to stay with me. And she stayed for two days. The third day, she texted me while I was at work and said, I'm leaving and you can't convince me otherwise, but I want to make things work. We're gonna do long distance. So she leaves. Her mom flies into California. She packs up her Jeep with everything she has, everything that can fit, and two cats. And she leaves. And we say, okay, we're gonna make it work. Days go by. It's obviously not working. You know, I'm on edge because she left me saying, I want to make things work, but I don't know if I want to leave you. I don't know if I want to be with you. So I call her and I, I tell her, you know, I need an answer. Do you want to leave me or do you want to be with me? Because I feel like it's simple because I know I want to be with you. She said, yeah, I want the divorce. So okay. It wasn't even 24 hours until Tori posted a breakup video to YouTube. 
didn't even have 24 hours to process what had been told to me. I didn't, I didn't have a second to think. I didn't get the chance to tell my whole family that I was getting a, a divorce. My family had to find out through YouTube. It was heart-wrenching. Tori flies down a few days later to get her stuff. The rest of the big stuff, she packs it up. Tells me she doesn't want to split the savings evenly and she deserves more because she worked for the YouTube and I'm staying in the house and I get the key. She told me she can't help pay for the divorce because she doesn't have any money right now and every excuse that she could pull out, she did. So I spent thousands of dollars on starting the divorce process during a pandemic and that's never easy. So a few months go by, it's June, July. Tori asks if she can call me and I say yes. I'm on a mission and I answer the phone and we're cordial, you know, I'm she wants to update me on her life, you know, I ask how our family is, how our business is. And then I tell her, you know, a little bit about me and what's going on. And it was a friendly conversation. She tells me, you know, who she's seeing at the time, who I'm seeing, you know, we just update each other. And and then she tells me, you know, things have been a little bit rough with this guy I'm seeing because our mutual friend, the one that I was originally had concerns about, was messaging her and calling her repeatedly, leaving her voicemails and pictures and love notes. You know, I saw that coming. You know, I hadn't heard from him since I told them that we were going to get a divorce. You know, I, I he not said a word to me and frankly, he wasn't there for me when I needed him. So we hung up the phone and a few days go by and I take matters in my own hands and I go visit him. I go to his apartment and I knock on his door and I say, can we talk? I tell him what's going on. I'm like, why are you doing this? You know, I could never trust you. Like, I can't believe that you did this. You know, you waited for my divorce and then you went right for my, you know, my wife. And he said, you don't know the whole truth. And I was like, okay then what is it? He explains to me that Tori was there a few weeks ago and they had an Airbnb together and he told me they had sex. Infuriated, I was angry and I kept it together and I said, okay, well, you know, did you have sex with her before then? And he said, yes. He said that they had been having sex since October, the last six months of Tori and I's relationship. And mind you, he's only telling me this because Tori had broke up with him. She wanted nothing to do with him anymore and they weren't a thing anymore. And him being heartbroken just let everything out. And he said, yeah, well, Tori told me she loved me back in July. You know, she promised me this future. We were going to get a house together in Texas. I was going to get out of the military for her. He showed me the messages of him messaging one of her sisters, talking about how they're excited for when he's going to be a part of the family and Tori's going to leave me for him. I lost it started crying and I, I couldn't keep it together anymore and I left, went in the parking lot and all I could do was call Tori. I called her, not knowing what I was gonna say. And I just, she answered and I said, you know, how could you do this to me? And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, how did you carry up this life for so long? How could you cheat on me? He told me all along that I was the reason for this divorce and all my wrongdoings when the whole time that you were in a relationship with somebody else. And she denied it, denied it, and then finally, she sheds one tear and she says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, and all I could say was, you know, good job. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you hurt me. You hurt me really bad. The one that I let into my house, who had basically his own room here, who I cooked breakfast for, who I got birthday and Christmas presents for, it was an open door. I replay all these moments and I look back at all the times that we were all together when they were dating and we were married and I had no idea. Well, I'll never understand how they carried that out for so long. Or why. Why didn't you leave me before you started cheating with my coworker, one of my best friends? Why would one of my friends do that to me? But Tori had this dream life in Texas and she reassured me many times how supportive her family was and how it was the perfect place to be and and it was a dream life. And my major hesitation to moving to Texas wasn't Texas. It was her family. And it's hard to tell the person that you love that you don't like their family. But it came to the point where I had to. They were very unwelcoming. They they weren't supportive of her being gay. And they made that extremely clear. Her sister made it very clear that I was destroying their business and destroying their restaurant because I was in a relationship with Tori and they didn't want our relationship online because it could impact their business. And not only did their homophobia shine through, so did their racism. You know, blatantly, her mother said, 
Well, at least she's not black. First few months of us dating, they called me Brittany when I wasn't around. They didn't really care to get to know me at all. I st to this day, I, I don't think they know a single thing about me. They genuinely were not good hearted people. And it showed through the entire time. Her sisters and I don't know if her mom and dad knew that she was cheating on me and they supported the entire thing. And on vacations and cruises, they would encourage Tori to cheat on me the entire time as they did cheat on their spouses the entire time. The whole family was cheating and lying, racist and homophobic. And it was something that I personally could not adjust to because that is something that no one should have to adjust to. And was that a life in Texas with me? Was it with someone else? You know, what was she telling him while she was telling me? I'm glad I know, I'm glad I found out, and I'm glad he told me. It took a lot of the guilt off of me that she put on top of me. I mean, she ripped my heart out, stomped on it, and then put it on the internet. And she didn't care in the process who was she was hurting, even though I thought that I was the person that she loved the most. I think I saw every single one of her true colors come out. I do hope that inside she does take ownership and she does realize the hurt that she caused and the damage that she did. I hope she has those sleepless nights where she knew what she was doing. I hope she felt that guilt. I just don't know how you could do that and not feel it. I couldn't live with myself. And I felt guilty in myself that I ever let somebody take so much control of me and who I was when I was, you know, young and still trying to figure out who I really was. It felt like I had tried so hard to insert myself into her life and her interests that I got lost in myself to the point where I wasn't truly myself. I was acting different, I was dressing different because that's what she wanted. She wanted me to be more feminine so I would dress more feminine. I wore a wedding dress when I didn't feel comfortable in it. It just wasn't me. None of it was. Sometimes I truly wonder if the motive of Tori being with me was for publicity and for followers and for the money. And I, you know, I denied it so many times. And as I see it play out and I see a video, you know, pop right up right after the divorce came around within not even 24 hours, it kind of clicked. And as more came up, Passwords change, the money is gone, no help with the divorce, it started clicking. Do I want that to be true? Absolutely not, but it's proven to be true. It's embarrassing that I put my entire relationship online when it, you know, it ended in failure. But on the other end, it's not because it was meant to fail, and that was fate. And I had done everything in my power to keep it together. I hope she's internalized what she's done. I hope she comes clean with herself. I don't need an, an apology. I just hope she doesn't do this to the next person. No one deserves this. My mom tells me over and over again, you know what, I need to hear it, you know, Burke. If there's one person in the world that doesn't deserve this, it's you. And I'd like to believe that, but I think I handled it in a way that most people wouldn't. And I'm very proud of that. And I think I did a lot of it internally, but I, I also had the help of my friends and family. I feel like through all this, I was the bigger person. And some days being the bigger person wasn't easy. I'm an easy person to take advantage of. And she took every advantage of me if she could. She did a great job of it. And I applaud her a great actress. It was really hard at first going through the motions of accepting what she had done and not being able to look at her and you know tell her how I felt and ask her all the questions that I wanted to know but I'm glad I don't know. I accepted what had happened and I'm glad I wasn't the person that did that to someone else. What I had wanted was for her to take ownership of, for what she did. Not to blatantly say what she did, but not place all the blame on me and do it publicly. 
the other videos that you see up of us that are older, you know, years old, that have millions of views, you know, she kept those up. I asked several times for her to take them down just because for me it's a respect thing. And I, I don't want that relationship publicized anymore. I just don't think it's right, it doesn't feel right. And she blatantly told me to get over myself and not look at it if I don't want to. So I guess that's what I have to do because I don't have any control over it. But what I want people to know is in the moments of us making those videos and sharing our relationship was it was real for me and was it real for her i don't know i think well, a lot of that was for her was fame and the money and all the attention for me it wasn't that and it never was you know i didn't care about the followers or the money that we made i cared about the people that i touched and i still continue to care about those people there, there i had some downfalls and i'll admit that i I have downfalls, but I wasn't the one that failed that marriage, and I will always stand by that. There's never something that will justify cheating on the person that you're with. There was never a reason for her to be in another relationship for six months, to be going behind my back and having sex with somebody else for six months. Nothing will justify that. And I can tell you right now, no one should have to beg and plead for someone to love them. And I will never do that again. If someone is questioning their love for you, get out. They don't deserve you. I was trying so hard to keep her in my life when that wasn't the best thing for me. But I tried every single thing that I possibly could to keep her. What I am thankful for is to be out of that marriage. It took me a long time to come clean with this because it's embarrassing. What happened was happening right in front of my face and I was blind to it trusted her. That's embarrassing your wife is cheating with one of your best friends. I know that everything happens for a reason and everything that happened was meant to happen. And if everything didn't happen the way it did then I wouldn't be where I am today. She wouldn't be where she is today. I hope that she's doing well. I hope that she takes some time to figure out herself and what she wants and the person that she wants to be. And I hope that some of her does change. And I hope that she does do some growing, as I will too. I'll take lessons away from this. I'll, I'll take a lot away. But mostly, I want to throw most of that memory of her away. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Because I replay memories that we had, and, and to me, they just, they're not genuine anymore. They don't mean anything. And that doesn't hurt as much as it makes me appreciate what I have now and the amazing girlfriend that I have right now. I learned a lot. I made mistakes. I gave a lot of me to someone that never deserved any bit of me. I learned my lesson and I take that away with grace and I'm ready to move forward. Now, I'm so happy. I feel like me. I feel like I've been hiding for years. And for years I was in a relationship with someone that I was working against. Who I tried so hard to work with but continued to work against. And now I'm with someone who is amazing. And we work as a team. And we give each other that mutual respect and love. And I've never felt anything like it. And I'm so grateful for it. Future plans, um, I've got a few more months left. I am spending the rest of my contracts here in California. I promoted, I traveled around the world. I've seen amazing places, I've met amazing people, I've done great things. I feel very accomplished. In a few months, I am moving again. And it's on to the next chapter, it's on to a new life. And I'm excited. I'm really excited to see where life takes me. I still want to connect with everyone in some meaningful way because I love that part. You know, I don't want to drop off the face of the earth, but I I will be, you know, a bit more private in my my life now. I I do want to do some growing myself and privately, but I do in the future want to make 
you know, more connections with people. I want to be impactful in some type of way. I think what I did on YouTube previously kind of made an impact and it, it made a difference and maybe I can mold that into something else. Well, we'll see. Uh, I want to thank every one of you for for supporting me because it meant a lot. I hope that I I made a difference in some some way, big or small. And I'm ready to start start new, start fresh, start somewhere different. Thank you for watching this. I know if you've been looking for answers, this is your answer. And you can take it in any way if you choose to not believe it or believe it. I I have nothing to lose. I'm just here to give the truth and my truth and what I owe to myself. I just want to make it as clear as I can that this will be the only video about this that I'll be making. No matter what happens, no matter what is said, this is my final piece. Just one last thing. One last thing. I caught my best friend having a relationship with my girlfriend and I don't know what to do. There was actually multiple people who responded saying that they cut their best friend and their significant other together. That fucking sucks. It's like losing two people. That fucking sucks.